Hi there. Today I'm going to share with you how and why I quit my job and moved to the south of France at the age of 51. Now, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so that each time that I upload a video about life in France, moving abroad or living abroad, you will be notified. My name is Patricia Brooks and I live in the south of France where I run a coaching and mentoring program that helps women move abroad confidently and sustainably. I also am an author of two books that help you to live life more boldly. Now, I have been living in France for almost four years and it's amazing for me to be able to say that because getting here and staying here was not easy. So I'm going to start at the beginning. Back in 2014, 2015 timeframe, I was living in the United States and my life on the surface was not a bad life. I had a good paying job. I had a nice house. I had lots of friends, but deep down I was very unhappy. I hated that job and I felt like there had to be more to life, but each day I'd go into that job and do the daily grind and come home and think, oh, there's got to be something more. So in order to kind of shake things up, I started solo traveling. I had recently been divorced and my parents had died a few years earlier. So I was kind of felt grounded and I chose to go to Quebec City, Canada because as a child, I remember going there and how quaint it was. And I also remember they spoke French. And so I decided I wanted to speak French to the locals. So I dusted off my high school and college French. And six weeks later, boarded a plane that landed in Canada. And I spoke to the locals, bonjour. And they spoke back to me, bonjour, comment allez-vous, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> to which I replied, eh? And then they said, oh, well, you fooled us. We thought you spoke French. And that really encouraged me. And that made me want to really learn the language. And I, I practiced French in order to get good. And really, the French language was what drew me to live in France. I went back to Quebec a couple more times and considered actually moving there. But the winters there were a little bit too cold for me. And so in 2015, I visited France for the first time and I could see myself living here. And so that seed of a dream of living in a French speaking country started to sprout and I continued practicing my French. And I went back to Canada to kind of <laughs> to, to relieve myself of some of that stress from my job. But each time I would go back to from a vacation to that job, it was like I hadn't been on vacation, right? I'd go back that morning and then two hours later, it was just like all of that relaxation and enjoyment that I had, poof, it was up in smoke. Have you ever felt that way? Did you go on a vacation and come back to work and it felt like you hadn't ever left? Click the like button if you have ever experienced that. Well, anyway, I continued going into this job. I continued tolerating this job. I did an amazing job. I could do it blindfolded. It wasn't challenging and I didn't feel appreciated, but I continued to do it. And then maybe a year and a half or so later, the climate in the United States really started to change. And I really realized that I didn't feel like the U.S. felt much like home anymore. Again, both my parents had died and I was ready for something new and different. But I hadn't really done anything to make my life living in France a reality. Yes, I studied my French. That was the one thing. But I hadn't done any research on visas. I hadn't done any research on how much I would need to sustain myself. I hadn't started clearing out my house 
right? I, there was so much that I could have been doing, but for whatever reason, I guess it was fear, um, I was stuck. Well, a couple of weeks after that, I read a blog post from a woman who had moved to Italy for three years. And in that article, she spoke about hiring a life coach. And so I looked this life coach up and I reached out to her and we had a call after which I decided, I think this is exactly what I need to get unstuck and move my dream of living abroad forward. And so that's what I did. I hired her. And so during our first call, she asked me, well, how much would it take for you to move to France on a visitor visa and so that you could show that you could support yourself? And I went, uh, I don't know. And she said, well, that's your homework. Next week, I'd like you to come back and let me know how much it would take. And so the day before our next call, I did the research. And it was then that I realized that I had this money block. I thought that mm, if I do this research and I don't have enough saved up to make this a reality, then, then my dream of living in France would never materialize, which wasn't true. If I had not had enough saved up, I would just have to save in order to, to reach that threshold. But as luck would have it, my father had said to me years and years ago, well, you really need a rainy day fund. If you have an emergency, you want to be able to pay for that without being stressed about it. And so I had been squirreling money away in my rainy day fund for years. And on occasion, I would have an emergency here or there a couple of hundred dollars here, maybe five or six hundred dollars there for car repair, but nothing that really substantially put a dent in that emergency fund. And so after these years, I had enough saved up to show that I could support myself for at least two years in France while I figured out what my next move would be. And so when I found that out after my first week of coaching, I could take my foot off the brake and put it on the accelerator. And a year later, I was boarding a plane bound for France <laughs> to live there. And it was amazing. I remember standing in line to board the plane at Dulles International Airport. And I remember feeling so many different emotions. I felt excited. I felt curious about what my new life would be, but I also felt scared and sad for leaving my old life behind. But I got on the plane and I took my seat and when the wheels went up and we, <laughs> when the plane took flight and we were in the air, I just relaxed and said, ah, it's happening. When we landed at Charles de Gaulle International Airport, Although I had a five hour train ride ahead of me to get to my new home, I felt like I was at home. I knew I had done the right thing. And it's really hard to express how good that felt. Now, almost four years later, the personal growth and development, my ability to speak French fluently, is something that is still hard for me to believe. But <laughs> it took a lot of work to get here. It took a lot of digging down deep to find that courage and the resilience in order to overcome those obstacles. And I will tell you, my first two weeks here were amazing. I was on cloud nine. I was going here and I was going there and I couldn't believe I'd done it. You did it. You did it. You did it. And then the start of week three, I woke up in the middle of the night, panic stricken. I asked myself, oh crap, <laughs> Patricia, what have you done? You quit your job. You don't know how you're going to support yourself beyond your savings. Did you do the right thing? And I could hear my mom's voice saying, a bird in the hand is worth two in the bush. You don't quit a job unless you have one at the ready. And here I had done exactly that. Ugh. 
it was a, it was a horrible feeling. And I struggled with this fear and this self doubt for eight to 10 months during that first year in France. But what saved me was the coach training that I had gotten about a year and a half before I made my move. I'd become a certified life coach. And so the tools and techniques I'd learned, I used on myself to talk myself off the ledge. But it was hard. <laughs> it was hard, especially to do all by myself. But I wouldn't change a thing. If you have a dream to live abroad, but you feel a little bit stuck, a little bit hesitant, a little bit scared, let's have a conversation. I offer a 30 minute complimentary discovery session so that you can kind of understand your why and what might be holding you back. And should my program be something that would benefit you, then I can share a little bit more about that with you. I am going to put a link in the description so that if that sounds like something you would be interested in, you can take advantage of. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it with others you think might enjoy it as well. I will see you again next time. Bye for now.